And since the riot in Lhasa last week, the foreign media have taken a keen interest in the Tibet situation. But some of the coverage has deferred greatly to the coverage here in China. Han Bin takes a look at the reasons behind such differences. This was Lhasa one week ago. These rioters smash houses. They destroyed property. They set fire. They attacked local police. And they threaten people's lives. But some Western media have described a very different scene. Has called on the world to denounce China's crackdown in Tibet. These scenes of peaceful protest of Western China determined to keep Tibetan protesters under firm control. The Tibet issue is given great prominence by major Western media outlets, but some commentators claim these journalists know little of the region's history and fail to show balance in their reports. Demonstrations have been a huge success, in as much as mm -hmm. Associate Professor Shi Anbin from Tsinghua University believes such coverage represents double standards. And I noticed that they use the word crack down for this Tibet coverage, but not for their, their Paris or Los Angeles uh, right coverage, simply because they adopted a kind of frame when they uh, covered the Tibet story. So they would identify this is as a crack down without knowing details or enough perspectives. So they would uh, automatically consider those people in Tibet as uh, peaceful demonstrators rather than mobs. So this naming strategy is always the, uh, a strategy that the, the Western media would use, especially for countries like China and also Iraq and, uh, or, and Palestine, because they are considered other, the other in the Western eyes. During the riots, local police appear to show restraint. They also rescued injured people. <laughs> Victims' relatives were in despair, while other people suffered severe injuries, including this Tibetan doctor. The veteran Tibetan official Rudi criticized some of the foreign media coverage, saying it was irresponsible for any country in the world to turn a blind eye on such crimes. Some Western media distorted the facts and described severe crimes as peaceful demonstrations while denigrating the legitimate efforts at maintaining social stability at violent crackdown. Some people have questioned the reliability of some of the Western media's coverage on Tibet. And as the two sides remain far apart on the issue, the public keep looking for the truth. One of the problems as a reporter in trying to uh, put together the story is that uh, many uh, media outlets have their own uh, 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 angle, their own approach to a particular story. Some might call it a bias, but, I but together, when you bring all of the media together, all of the press uh, reporters together, uh, all of the newspapers and magazines together, uh, you get a more complete picture. Access to the information is important. At the moment, La Salle is still off limits to Western journalists due to security reasons. So their reports are based on how Tibet is perceived. But with the gradual exposure of the region to the outside world, the Chinese are hoping their coverage of fighting the riot in Tibet will be better understood worldwide. Over the past years, the portrayal of China in the Western media has been fairly balanced due to China's improved relations with major powers and its growing openness to the outside world. But the Tibet issue has pulled this trend back to the old China cliches. The press may soon lose interest, and people might see the information about the crackdown may not be so reliable. Han Bin, CCTV.